welcome to channel dental notes and mnemonics uh, welcome to today's video on uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma which is the most common form of oral cancers in this video we'll explore the oral squamous cell carcinoma its risk factors clinical presentation and the importance of timely diagnosis and management by the end you will be having a clear picture of how oral squamous cell carcinoma develops how it is treated and how early intervention can make a life saving difference so without any delay let's get started with the video first we will discuss in brief what is oral mucosa because uh, this is the area where the squamous cell uh, carcinoma begins so the oral uh, mucosa we know as uh, it is a protective lining inside the mouth it composed of three layers first is epithelium then basement membrane and the lamina propria oral squamous cell carcinoma typically arises from the squamous cell in the epithelial layer the epithelium can be keratinized or non keratinized with non keratinized area are more prone to uh, carcinogens thus they are more prone to the development of the oral squamous cell carcinoma uh in the cancer uh, the cancerous cell invade beyond the basement membrane into the lamina propria and the deeper tissues as per schaefer's uh, textbook of oral pathology squamous cell carcinoma of oral cavity may be defined as a malignant epithelial neoplasm characterized by proliferation of atypical squamous cells that invade the underlying connective tissue it is the most common type of oral cancers of a presenting as non healing ulcers leukoplakia or erythroplakia now let's talk about the incidence of uh, squamous cell carcinoma uh, in reference to indian population india has one of the highest rates of oral cancers globally the incidence of uh, cancer is approximately 30 to 50 cases per 1 lakh people in high risk areas Shockingly oral cavity cancers account for about 25% of all cancers diagnosed in India. Understanding these demographics is crucial for targeted prevention efforts. Now let's look at the uh, geographical variations in certain regions particularly in northern India like Punjab and Uttar Pradesh uh, shows the high significantly higher incidence rates of the cancer. and this is often linked to the lifestyle cho choices especially the betel quid or erica nut chewing which are prevalent in these areas oral cancer often arises in specific sites within the oral cavity first on our list is the tongue which is the most common site for the cancers particularly uh, affected area of the tongue is the lateral border and these lesions may appear as a persistent ulcers or indurated masses here and due to tongue's mobility and exposure any suspicion lesion warrants immediate evaluation next we have the floor of the mouth and this site has a high incidence of cancer often presenting as a mass or ulceration lesions here can be deceptively subtle sometimes resembling uh, common oral conditions which is why vigilance is crucial uh, now next is uh, the buccal mucosa it is also commonly affected and the lesion may appear as a white patches uh, known as leukoplakia or ulcerations due to chronic irritation from the habit such as chewing chewing a uh, tobacco and these lesions can progress to malignancy uh, moving on to gingiva or the gums which are less commonly affected but uh, still can show the significant signs of cancers uh, lastly the heart palate which is rarely involved Uh, though lesions can occur as raised masses the lips especially the lower lip are also at the higher chances particularly in the individuals with the excessive sun exposure these lesions may present as a non healing sores or raised areas uh, we'll break down the key risk factors for oral cancer using the mnemonic squamous where s stands for smoking q for the quantity of the alcohol U stands for the ultraviolet radiations and the particularly affecting the lower lip. A stands for the erica nut chewing. M stands for the uh, malnutrition. O stands for the oncogenic viruses, especially the strains of HPV 16 and 18. U stands for ulceration. S stands for the sunlight. Diagnosis of oral squamous cell carcinoma can be made uh, with the uh, 
clinical examination and histopathological reports and imaging techniques. Uh, we will be dealing these topics in the coming slides. Clinical diagnosis can be made on the basis of the uh, visual examination, symptoms, palpation and the presence of the risk factors. In early stage, uh, the cancer may appear as a small ulcer or bum inside the mouth uh, that does not heal. And uh, you may also notice the red and white mixed patches uh, which is erythroplakia and the leukoplakia. The skin on palpation may feel firm or thickened but surprisingly at this stage the patient has no pain or just a little uh, discomfort is there. Uh, the surface also appears rough and eroded and uh, now let's talk about the advanced stage uh, of the cancer. Uh, in this stage it becomes more severe and comes with a larger ulcer uh, that is painful and has a raised thick border. The lesion can become fixed to the deeper tissue making it harder to move the parts of the oral cavity like jaws. It can also spread to the nearby lymph nodes causing lumps in the neck uh, when it is metastatized. People may struggle with the everyday uh, tasks like chewing, swallowing or even speaking. Uh, there may be more systemic symptoms like uh, weight loss or fatigue. And as uh, the uh, disease progresses, the tissue breaks down, ulceration and bleeding can occur and which may be accompanied by the foul order from the necrosis. Talk about how we confirm uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma with a biopsy. We look at the cancer cells uh, which can be of different types, uh, either producing keratin or not. It's important to check if the tumor has spread beyond the uh, basement membrane into nearby tissue. That means it has undergone the tissue invasion. Uh, the tumor is also graded as uh, well moderately or poorly differentiated depending on how abnormal the cells are. Lastly, we check the lymphovascular invasion which means the cancer has spread into the blood vessels or lymph nodes uh, thus increasing the risk of it spreading further. By the complex histopathology of the oral cancer, we can use the mnemonic care tips and each letter here is highlighting a key feature of the cancer uh, making it easier to remember. C stands for increased uh, cellularity, uh, more atypical cells are present. A stands for the anaplasia uh, which indicates a poorly differentiated cells. R highlights keratinization uh, seen as a keratin pulse or dyskeratotic cells. Uh, e here refers to epithelial elevation where the tumor spreads into the deeper tissues. T stands for the disorganized tissue structures. I means increased mitotic activity and uh, the cell division is abnormal. P is a perivascular invasion as the tumor surrounds the blood vessels and S signifies the stromal reaction. There is increased fibrotic response in the surrounding tissue. Imaging is important for understanding how far the cancer has spread. X-rays uh, help us to check if the cancer has reached the jaw bones. CT scans give the detailed images of both the hard and the soft tissues uh, useful for staging the cancer and planning the treatment accordingly. MRI is used for viewing the soft tissue and can detect the cancer spreading along the nerves. PET scans are also helpful to see if the cancer has spread to the other parts of the body and show how active the tumor is. Before further going into the video, I would like to clarify a common point of confusion in uh, oncology, the difference between staging and grating. Staging is uh, uh, assess the extent of the cancer spread in the body uh, informing the treatment options and the prognosis and while grading focuses on the appearance and the differentiation of the cancer cell helping predict the tumor aggressiveness. Uh, in case of uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma we often use a broader classification which categorizes the tumor into the four grade based on their cellular characteristics grade 1 is well differentiated grade 2 uh, is moderately differentiated grade, grade 3 it denotes to uh, poorly differentiated carcinomas and uh, grade 4 is undifferentiated one does this classification reflects the aggressiveness of the tumor the less differentiated the cell the more aggressive and invasive the cancer tend to be and in case of the staging, uh, we commonly use system uh, for staging the oral cancer. T 
TNM system where the T uh, denotes the tumor size and the extent of invasion into the nearby tissues N uh, shows the involvement of the regional lymph nodes and M shows the presence of distance metastasis. On the basis of TNM staging uh, or the three parameters we have taken, uh, the oral cancer has been staged into stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. And in stage 1, it represents the earliest stage of the oral cancers. Here we have uh, uh, the T1 that is tumor size is 2 cm or smaller indicating a localized growth. And N0, M0 without any involvement of the regional lymph nodes and no distant metastasis. This stage highlights a highly favorable prognosis as the cancer is contained. In stage 2, uh, the tumor size uh, is greater than 2 cm but it is not exceeding 4 cm. And there is no involvement of uh, lymph node and uh, no distant metastasis is found. While the tumor is larger, it remains localized which is crucial for the treatment considerations. Stage 3 denotes uh, a locally advanced cancer. The tumor measures greater than 4 cm and there may be the ipsilateral involvement of single lymph node. And uh, still there is no distant metastasis. Now we arrive at stage 4, uh, the tumor may have invaded the nearby structures indicating significant local spread and it involves the multiple regional lymph nodes and distance metastasis is present highlighting the most advanced stage of the cancer. Oral squamous cell carcinoma can metastatize uh, through three routes, first is the lymphatic route, hematogenous route. Uh, the lymphatic route is a primary method where the cancer cells travel along the lymphatic vessels to the nearby lymph nodes and the lymph node is the most frequent uh, location uh, for the distance metastasis, uh, particularly the cervical lymph nodes. Hematogenous uh, uh, spread uh, the cancer cells enters into the bloodstream and they reach into the distant organ like lungs and the liver. And the lung is the most common site for distance metastasis where the cancer cells uh, spread through the bloodstream. Involvement of bone is less common but uh, the spread can happen in the mandible and the other bones as well. Now let's discuss the treatment protocols. Uh, the treatment approach varies significantly depending, depending upon the stage of the uh, disease. Uh, for the stage 1, the primary treatment is uh, surgical excision of the tumor and if uh, there are involved lymph nodes, a neck dissection may also be considered. In stage 2, the treatment typically involves a surgical excision as well as along with a neck dissection if uh, necessary. Additionally, uh, radiation therapy might be recommended uh, depending upon the surgical margins. In uh, stage 3 cancers, the protocol involves a surgical resection of the primary tumor, a comprehensive neck dissection and post-operative radiation therapy to ensure that any remaining cancer cells are eliminated. Stage 4 uh, oral cancer requires a multi-model approach uh, which involves surgical resection, neck dissection and it may also include the uh, radiation therapy or the chemotherapy. Palliative care becomes an essential component in advanced uh, diseases uh, stages to improve the quality of life. Prevention plays a crucial role in reducing the incidence of the uh, oral cancer. First and foremost is tobacco cessation is vital. Quitting tobacco in all the forms, whether it is uh, smoking, chewing or using the snuff, significantly reduces the risk of developing cancers. Next, limit the alcohol consumption. Uh, high alcohol can uh, be linked to an increased risk of the oral cancers, especially when it is combined with the tobacco use. Another effective preventive measure uh, is uh, human papilloma virus uh, vaccination and getting vaccinated can protect against infections linked to oral squamous cell carcinoma and it is particularly important for adolescent and young adults. Regular uh, dental checkups and maintaining a good oral hygiene practices is another important preventing measures. Adopting a healthy lifestyle with a healthy diet is uh, beneficial. Regular dental checkups and maintaining a good oral hygiene is another important preventive measure. 
adopting a healthy diet uh, and the lifestyle is also beneficial use of uh, lip balm with uh, spf and wearing hats can protect uh, from the lips uh, protect the lips uh, from harmful uv radiations uh, which is a risk factor for developing lip cancer lastly awareness is the key informing the public health uh, or the public about the risk factors and the early stages of the oral cancers can lead to earlier intervention better prognosis so this was all about uh, oral squamous cell carcinoma hope you like the video and found it informative please hit the subscribe button for more content like this don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues to spread awareness about oral squamous cell carcinoma we would love to hear your thoughts and uh, questions so make sure to leave a comment below your engagement help us to create better content for you thank you thanks for watching have a nice day